Welcome in. Come on in. I'm Jay, your host, and we will be exploring today that law enforcement regarding the Sebastian Rogers case does suspect foul play, and this has turned into a criminal investigation because where we have foul play, my friends, we have crime. You know, foul play, we hear it all the time in true crime. But have you stopped and really studied what it means when law enforcement and investigators say foul play? Foul play, unfair or treacherous action, especially involving violence. Foul play is criminal violence or activity that results in a person's death. Foul play, criminal or violent activity that causes somebody's death. Criminal violence or murder, a criminal act that results in serious damage or injury, especially murder. I mean, really think about, I know we think that foul play is something nefarious, but when you really look the meaning behind it, it's scary and it's concerning because in the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers, very shortly after he went missing, seven days, law enforcement started talking about foul play. They do not yet have evidence as of March 4th, but they were looking and suspecting foul play. So they have to build a case and they have to prove it. So we're going to listen to Nick Barris from News Channel 5. He's the one who spoke with authorities in Sumner County and got that info. We have two audios from Nick. This first one's from March 4th, very early on, seven days into the disappearance of Sebastian Rogers. And listen to what they are already speaking about and telling Nick Barris from the media. And by the way, he is the Sumner County Sheriff's Office source to get info out during the drought of no official updates. When they have information, they give it to him to put out there. So he does have an inside track. This is Nick Barris. Credit to Nick from News Channel 5. Significant shift in the case of Sebastian Rogers, the missing autistic 15-year-old. It's a case we have followed closely since he disappeared. We care what happens next just like you. And now one week after Sebastian vanished from his Sumner County home, authorities are scaling back the search effort. And they are now calling it an investigation. Nick Barris shares the latest details. And we also hear for the first time publicly today from the missing teen's mother and stepfather. The original thinking was that Sebastian Rogers left home on his own, but the fact that he disappeared without a trace now has authorities looking into the very real possibility of foul play. Seven days of intense searching from the ground and air. Hundreds of officers and citizens, bloodhounds, and nothing. No security video of the team and no trace of Sebastian. We're used to producing and this is one of those those cases that, that we haven't been able to produce yet. No one is giving up. Sebastian could still be alive somewhere, alone, hurt, lost, or trapped. The search effort will continue, but... Um, we're scaling back a little bit. What exactly does that mean? Well, sources close to the case confirm authorities are now considering foul play and that this missing teen case could become a criminal investigation. So So that's seven days in of Sebastian being missing. They are already thinking of foul play and shifting into an investigation. And we know criminal investigation because where there is foul play, there is crime. And we also learned in yesterday's video that in order to search the landfill, they had to have, they had to fulfill burden of proof and show probable cause. So we do know that they have something in order to have been able to get that search warrant. Another clue is when Craddock, the deputy sheriff, was on the thumbnail, and I've heard it a few different times. I wish he was say, said it in this upcoming audio, but he does not. When he says, we have nothing to support foul play, he could end it right there. But oftentimes he adds, but we have nothing to support there is, is, isn't foul play. So that, in my opinion, lets us know 
just because they don't have evidence to prove it doesn't mean they don't think it and there is not foul play. He doesn't need to add that. He could just leave it at we have nothing to support. There isn't, there is foul play, but he goes on. And if he did not want us to think in any way that it involved those close to Sebastian, his family allegedly, he would not add that part, in my opinion. So, he, like I said, he doesn't add it in this upcoming audio. It's June 20th, but a lot is relayed to us. An update from law enforcement to Nick Barris again, News Channel 5, who they give the information to. And we are going to listen to that one. Same in the Sebastian Rogers case, the 15-year-old vanished more than four months ago from his Hendersonville home. In that case, too, investigators think it's unlikely the teen with autism just wandered away on his own with little or no scent detected by canines. Any evidence of foul play? We have not cleared anyone, but we have absolutely no evidence to support foul play. Yet, anyway, though those close to the case say that now is the most likely scenario. So they believe it's unlikely he wandered away on his own. And when they said there was no evidence to prove foul play, you heard Nick Barris say yet. Most likely, because those close to the case do believe that's the most likely scenario. They just need the proof, the physical proof. And based on the ground search, all the span covered, we now know when they were scaling back, it was because they were learning there was foul play, and that was around March 4th. Okay, we got the scaling back part, but kind of missed that foul play piece along with it. The National Center for Missing and Exploited Children says, um, in addition to runaways, family abductions and non-family abductions, there are two other categories that the National Center for Missing and Exploited Children handles, lost, injured, or otherwise missing, and critically missing young adults. A lost, injured, or otherwise missing child is defined as a child who has disappeared under unknown circumstances or a child who is too young to appropriately be considered an endangered runaway. This ranges from a child wandering off and becoming lost to a child who may have been abducted, abducted, but no one saw happen. These circumstances sometimes involve foul play, and those reporting the incident may attempt to cover up a crime involving the child. That's from the National Center of Missing and Exploiting Children. Missing and Exploited Children. So we know when there is foul play, there is a crime, often cited as factors that need to be present for there to be a crime are means, motive, and opportunity. And I believe in my opinion, that along with physical evidence is what they're working on. Because seven days in, they expected it. But they didn't tell us who they expect, but he did tell us in this audio, no one has been cleared. That means the immediate family, friends, those surround Sebastian have not been cleared. An initial step in missing children is to clear the parents. What they do is they clear, clear the parents, anyone living with the child, then they move outward, the neighbors, the registered sex offenders in the area. And that, so now we're four, over four months in and they have not been cleared. That has not yet been accomplished. So let's talk about means, motive, and opportunity. We learned in our motive model the three ways to measure motive are um, through achievement, power, and affiliation. But right now we're looking at crime, and then we're going to tie that in as well. So in order for there to be a crime, there's means, motive, and opportunity. Means is who had the ability, and we are not accusing, but we're just going over our, what we know. So who had the ability? Well, we know in this one there was one person allegedly home alone with Sebastian. That person would have had means, correct? The house was locked at night before Sebastian went missing and locked in the morning after he went missing. There was no sign of breaking and entering. So logically, someone with keys, codes, or the garage door opener had the means. 
immediate family, according to Katie Proudfoot, she told Nancy Grace, yes, immediate family is the only ones with access to the locked house. So we would include immediate family in means, but she did not specify what immediate family. And there are several that live in the area. So we know definitely herself and CP have keys. Okay. Opportunity. Did the alleged suspect have the opportunity or did something make it easy for them to commit the crime? And I'm just going over ones I think of off the top of my head. Please drop in the comments ones you think of as well. Um, to me, the easiest would be the person who was home alone with him. I'm not pointing fingers. I'm just going through opportunity, means, and motive. And then motive, this is where we can bring in our three model. Motive model that we studied in our video, and I will pin that at the end if you missed it, because go back, we're, we're going to apply it to cases that we are going through. It helps us develop a motive. It's really interesting. So you've sent a wide array of motives, and let's go over some of them. We covered the three motive model. If you missed it, go back to the video. Number one, power is one of the motives of the three. Who do you think falls under a power motive? Okay, well, one one character in this story, their behavior alone, the screaming, the yelling on YouTube, the intimidation, using the C word, um, cussing, I think of that. Um, some of you believe in order to keep Sebastian from Seth, that was a power play. That could have been a power play motive. Number two on the model, we also have affiliation. Is there someone in this disappearance, in this case, close to Sebastian, whose motive would be in order to maintain an affiliation or her perhaps break and rid themselves of an affiliation? I mean, we've heard rumors of marital ultimatums, poor adult child relationships with Sebastian, family plots against a wife, custody cases, family services, open cases, possible not wanting to have to pay child support when Sebastian moved. So lots of different things we're not accusing. We're just going through the model, the motive model, the three ways. And then some of you have asked me, is Secret Service involved because it's foul play? And actually, no. The answer is they passed the Violent Crime and Control and Law Enforcement Act in 1994. And that is when it allowed Secret Service to provide forensic and technical support to the National Center of Missing and Exploited Children. And then in 2003, a revision to Title 18 USC 3056 authorized them to provide investigative assistance in missing and exploited children's cases when requested. So when they're requested to help, they can give us technical support, forensic support, and investigative support in missing children's cases. And the FBI, you wanted to know why they're not taking the lead. I believe um, we heard it's because they have to be asked and they have not been asked by the local authorities. But it also, but it does say that the FBI, as we know, has jurisdiction to immediately investigate any, any reported mysterious disappearance or kidnapping involving a child. So remember, it's not only if they've crossed state lines. And then we also know TBI has been involved from the beginning, Texas Bureau of Investigation. So let's talk statistically what we're looking at if we take emotion out of it. Statistically, the most common way children go missing is family abduction. Family kidnappings make up half of all reported abductions in the United States. Family abduction is typically committed by parents and it involves a significantly higher proportion of female perpetrators when compared to other kidnapping offenses. So to wrap it up, law enforcement suspects but yet cannot prove foul play. We read the meaning of foul play and it is not positive, usually according to the definition includes violence and death. They suspect they are watching, they are digging. Many of you have mentioned the family connection to law enforcement. Well, law enforcement has not been shy on saying they suspect foul play, regardless if there is an alleged connection. 
So that makes me feel good. But in my opinion, I do think if there is that connection, they will not, or they will make sure they have all the physical evidence they need, aka Sebastian and or remains, and an ironclad case before they accuse and before we see charges. Prayers up for Sebastian Rogers. This boy needs to be located. If you know anything about Sebastian's location or disappearance, please call 1-800-TBI-FIND. It is time. Do the right thing. Stay safe, friends, and we'll talk soon.